Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG English. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haowen. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们新平方的节目 NG 英文。我是 Angela. We have a great show for you today with our good friend Jeff the Machine Huang, who's known around the Taiwanese community as Huang Yuren. 是的，那今天呢，非常幸运的邀请到了台湾综合格斗界的指标人物黄玉仁 （Jeff the Machine） 来到我们 NG 英文节目，跟大家聊聊他的格斗生涯跟一路走来呢，他学英文的经验分享。But before we get to the interview with Jeff and I, Angela is going to break down some of the cultural differences Jeff spoke about, particularly about he versus she when he was explaining if he had a girlfriend or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take it away, Angela. Here on NG English. 好的，没有问题。这样，谢谢你的介绍。那没有错。今天嘞，我们要来跟各位聊聊英文在男生的他跟女生的他这部分的用法哦。那现在就请大家赶快把 NG cheat sheet 这个 NG 英文专属的笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。在待会的访谈中 ，Jeff 会讲到说，因为我们一般中文讲话的时候，通常不会特别去说明说是男生的他还是女生的他，一般就只会说，哎，他怎样怎样。所以常常在讲英文的时候啊，都会直接用 he 来代替所有的他。但是嘞，因为英文有分得很清楚，男生是讲 he， 而、啊、女生是讲 she， 甚至还有不分男女的 it， 所以常常会让人搞不清楚，说 Jeff 是来讲 he 还是在讲 she， 是男生还是女生。不过各位也别太担心啦、啊，这样子的状况呢，对于我们这些没有特别在性别用法上去做区分的中文母语者来说，其实很常见。我们只要习惯了，只要用上手了，就不怕会去讲错。记得 ，he 指的是男生的他，那 she 是女生的他。如果没有男女没有阴阳性之分的话，就可以用 it 来表示。例如说 ，he is a boy， 他是男生 ；she is a girl， 他是女生。It is a table. 这是一张桌子。好啦，那希望刚才讲的这些对你的英文学习之路有所帮助。如果有漏掉、没有听到或是写下来的，也不用担心啦，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时想要听几次就给他听几次。那如果大家都已经准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听 Jeff 他的分享吧。All right, thank you as always, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG English breakdown. Our guest today on the show is a world-class MMA fighter, CEO of the WOTD MMA fight scene here in Taiwan, trainer, TV personality, and so much more. So, everyone, please welcome my good friend Jeff the Machine. Hello, everybody. This is Jeff. Nice meeting you guys. Boom! What's up? We high five.、Uh, yeah. It's official onto the show. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on NG Ingwen, dude. I just got to attend a wonderful MMA event you just put on last week called Is it W O T D? Right,、yes. Way of the Dragon. Way of the Dragon. So, what what is your role in in the MMA world here in Taiwan? 访谈开始，这样讲到说啊，他不久前才去参加了一场由 Jeff 筹划的 MMA event， 这个综合格斗的活动。那 Jeff 他在我们台湾综合格斗界的角色是什么嘞？ What's his role in the MMA world here in Taiwan? He says he's an organizer. 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 He's 那如果你刚好也对纵横格斗很有兴趣，一直在等我们更新 MMA 系列访谈的话，那这些内容你想必会喜欢哦。For the show, I'm more like a organizer, also a CEO. I'm in charge of the business side, and you know, keep contacting people, arrange fights. You know, so it's my honor. When I first got this opportunity, I was super excited because I'm a fighter myself. But eventually, I think there's something more important I can do. So when I got this opportunity, I said yes with no hesitate. Yeah, I love that. So you're you you grew up kind of in in the world of MMA fighting and training, but now you believe you have another addition you can add to that, and that's the business side and growing the sport here in Taiwan. So I believe was there about fifty fights at this last event? 接下来呢，我们会谈到在他们的上一场活动里面，总共有五十场对打。
那 Jeff 说，这包括了职业跆拳道，包括 kickboxing 这个踢拳，还有业余跟职业的综合格斗。他说，他们都会试着把各种 combat sport、各种竞技运动、各种搏击运动呢，加入到他们的综合格斗比赛里面。因为搏击运动它整体而言是一个非常有吸引力的运动，他们希望把这样的运动好的一面呢带给大家，让更多人知道说，哎，它不是 brutal， 不是暴力残忍的运动，都只是在打架揍人这样子哦。而是有更深层的一面在，所以他们想要大力推广这样的运动，让社会大众更认识综合格斗，真的去了解说，哦，功夫 （martial arts） 跟这个搏击运动 （combat sports） 到底是怎么一回事。那他们最后也有讲到说 ，John 一直都有在支持他们，而且从这次活动真的可以感受到有越来越多人对综合格斗的参与。Jeff 说，他记得很久以前 John 有去看过他们在台北小巨蛋举办的比赛。但因为当时只有职业选手可以参加，所以就只有十场而已。不过呢，幸好这次邀请的业余选手也一起来共享盛举，现场啊多了不少观众在为场上的朋友欢呼加油，场面非常感人，非常的 touching。Yeah, this event we get we got fifty fights, including Taekwondo, professional Taekwondo, kickboxing, also amateur and pro MMA. So we try to put different combat sports into our event because. Combat sports as a whole sport is very attractive, and we want to show people the bright side, also the fun side of combat sports. It's not brutal, and it's not just about fight or punch each other. There's something more deeper inside. So we would love to push this sport and give the true face to everyone in Taiwan, even to the world. Like what martial arts, what combat sports really is. Yeah, I love that so much, and I think you guys are doing a great job. I've been supporting you guys for as long as I can now, and I really felt at this last event, you know, there's a new energy that's coming. There's more people kind of there. They're staying for all the fights. It's it's really good. So I want to congratulate you on all of that. Thank you. I remember the first time you came to our show was、uh, in Taipei Arena. Taipei Arena. That was a、right. big professional event, but last match only ten, but this one is like. Because we including amateur fights, so more people join us and a lot of audience there, all rooting for their friends or their favorite fighters. That was very touching. Yeah, man, I I think that's that's what you are doing, and that's why I think this is it's destined to succeed because you are bringing that the heart aspect into the respect world that is MMA, and martial arts is such a respect sport. So backtracking then a little bit. What got you into MMA, and when did you start training and fighting? 访谈进行到这边，不知道大家有没有在想说，哎，当初我们这位 Jeff the Machine， 他是怎么样接触到综合格斗？什么时候开始接受训练的、啊？他说，其实一开始呢，他是想要当职业篮球选手的，但是因为身高在六尺一，在这个 six one， 就是大概我们的一百八十五公分左右。不够高哦，要 six four， 要六尺四，大概这个一百九十三才够，所以就做吧。后来二十二岁的时候嘞，开始练空手道。他说当时很快就上手了，本来想说可以认真练，当一位职业选手，但是大学毕业当完兵之后就要面对现实世界，只好把这个空手道梦先 pause， 先暂停哦，开始上班赚钱。后来工作了八年、十年之后嘞，他有一天就醒了，觉得说。不行，我要做一些改变。所以从那时候开始呢，就正式展开了他的格斗人生。It's funny because I was a basketball player, and before I graduated from college, my dream was always like I want to be a pro basketball player. But I knew I was not tall enough. You're pretty tall. How no, tall I, are I'm, you? I'm six one. But、okay. if you want to be pro, six you have to be and my play my position. You have to be at least six four、yeah. or something. Six one, you have to play like PG. Okay. I'm not good enough for that position. Right. So I knew I don't really have opportunity. And、uh, I remember when I was 22, I started to train karate, and、mm. I get into that like quick. Everything, my emotion, like everything, I was like, this is fun. So I had a dream to become a fighter, but I stopped the dream or I paused the dream for a while because you know after I graduated from college, after my service in the army, I had to face real world. So I I got a job and work for like. Maybe eight years, ten years, but one day when I woke up, I was like, "Man, I want to make some change." So that's why I'm here. Yeah, man, I I love that. I know your story. You you took such a break and you decided to just kind of quit your job. Is that correct? Yeah. Wow. So quit your job and start training full time. And the idea, though, 
at that moment wasn't to be the CEO of the fight organization. It was to pursue a path of a fighter. Is that right? 前面聊到了，从 Jeff 有天突然决定说要做些改变之后，就正式进入格斗世界。但是他这样子毅然决然离职，不是因为计划要当这协会的 CEO 吧 ？Jeff 说他觉得这一切都很妙，很像一个循环哦。怎么说呢？因为当初他离职，改变人生道路，就是因为要专心在格斗界发展。当一名格斗选手、格斗教练，但好像是他怎么也没想到，最后虽然是真的进入格斗界了，但还是一样离不开商业的领域。在协会里面，除了要处理很多有关 making profits、有关这个赚钱的事情，还要管理公司的上上下下。我们赶快听听他这段分享吧。It's like a circle, you know. I never thought I change my I change my life. I change different paths, but one day I still get back into business world. I have to think about how to. You know, make profit. How to organize a company? You know how to manage things. I was like, it's really fun. It's really funny because I was like, man, I'm probably gonna be a fighter and a coach for the rest of my life. Wow, such a transition, and I think it's so true to who you are because now you can apply all those different aspects. And I can't really see a better person than you being kind of the face of this. You are. In my mind now, you are the face of this organization, and I think it's a it's a perfect title and role for you. So, I wish you all the best. Thanks. Can you share what does、um, W O T D mean, and why did that name come to be for the for the fight game? 接下来我们要来问问 Jeff， 他们的格斗赛事叫做 W O T D 跟 E T D。那这些英文缩写是什么意思嘞？如果刚好是 Bruce Lee 李小龙忠实粉丝，或是有看过他电影的听众朋友，可能就会知道 W O T D 就是那部知名电影《猛龙过江》的英文名称缩写，叫做 Way of the Dragon。那 E T D 就是 Enter the Dragon， 龙争虎斗的缩写啊、哦。Jeff 说，大部分的人应该都有听过 Bruce Lee 这个名字，他大家可以说是中国武林世界的始祖、哦。但是嘞，很多人可能不知道的是啊，他其实也算是综合格斗的教父哦 ，The Father of MMA。那为了要纪念李小龙跟他的贡献呢，才会以这两部电影名称来给他们的格斗赛事命名。各位听众朋友们呐、啊，我们现在就赶过来听听有关这位闻名天下的格斗教父李小龙的分享吧。I think most people heard the name Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Bruce Lee is like a Chinese kung fu master. He's like a national hero also for a long time. But Not many people know he is also the father of MMA because in the movie he invent a kind of glove with his finger can grab and something. So even Dana White, the CEO of UFC, he said Bruce Lee is like the father of MMA. So it's like a tribute to our own hero. Said Way of the Dragon is his、uh, very important movie. So we use that name to tri- have a tribute to、uh, Bruce Lee. Also, ETD is Enter the Dragon. E-T-D. All from his movie. Wow, such an honoring tribute. I I think that's so great. So if you don't mind, can we backtrack a little bit? Because your language abilities, in my mind, have really opened up a lot of these new doors. So when did you begin learning English? 访谈进行到这边，相信听众朋友们已经在好奇说：“哎 ，Jeff， 他的英文这么好，这么流利，他是什么时候开始学的、啊？他又是怎么练的嘞？” Jeff 说，在台湾呢，大部分的人从国中开始上英文课，或是有的人可能更早，大概五六岁就开始学了。那他也一样，但是成绩一直都不太好。不过呢，幸好他对语言很有兴趣，很喜欢学，所以会尝试各式各样的方法去练习，像是看美国电影啦、啊，或是听西洋歌曲等等。他说，这样的方式可能不太能够拉高学校的英文考试成绩，但是嘞，对生活上的对话应用是还蛮有效的哦。不过，这样也讲到说，虽然能够真的在生活中运用学到的英文是很重要，但现在的孩子很厉害啦。如果有去努力读歌词，或是看英文电影字幕台词的话，其实说不定也一样可以提升在学校的英文考试成绩哦。听众朋友们，说不定呢，你也可以试试这样的方法来提升自己的英文能力哦。In Taiwan, we started to learn English from junior high school, and some people even went to like cram school since they were like maybe five or six. Right. Yeah, but I Me mean the same, but my grade, my grade in English was never very, very outstanding.、Mm-hmm. But I love English. I love language. So I use my way to learn language. Like I like to watch like American movie. I like to listen to like American, no matter like rock music, rap, anything. 
So maybe that's not good for your grade or for your school <laughs> test, but I think it's pretty good for life because you you will learn real life English from that. Yeah, I I love that, and that's that's something that you said perfectly. I think maybe it's it doesn't always apply to the grade, but it applies actually bigger to the grade. It applies to life, and maybe you know students nowadays can can use shows and movies or lyrics from songs. And they can work it into their grades, you know, using different vocabulary, something like this. So I think that's a great way to do it. So then, moving forward a little bit, are you using English and Mandarin Chinese and maybe Taiwanese now to run the business? 在这段访谈中，我们要来问问 Jeff， 他是同时用英文、中文还有台语来经营他们的格斗协会吗？他说呢，虽然综合格斗蛮国际化的，但是在台湾还是相对比较新的一个运动。所以除了用我们当地的中文和台语跟自己人沟通交流以外，如果希望持续推广综合活动在台湾的发展，希望有更多资源、更多人脉的话呢？同时也必须要站上国际舞台，用英文跟世界各国的选手沟通才行。尤其像现在世界最大、最主要的综合格斗联盟都是美国的，所以英文对他们来讲真的很重要。那最后 ，Jeff 也稍微提到一下说，说他之前在巴西受训的时候，有学了一些葡萄牙文。等一下，大家在最后会听到他们讲一些 t o t o b e i n t o t o b o n 其实就是葡萄牙文打招呼的方式。我们赶快听听这段有趣的分享吧。Yeah, because MMA. Is- More like an international sport in Taiwan, it's just growing. Maybe if you compare with people, maybe just like one year old. Yeah. So if we want to have better connection, <laughs> or you know, we ha- we wanna we wanna have better instructor or like better resource, we have to communicate with people from out of Taiwan.、Mm-hmm. So English is pretty important to develop MMA in Taiwan. Yeah. And the biggest league in the world is like UFC, Bellator,、mm-hmm. they all American based. Right. So it's pretty important.、Yeah. I also speak a little bit Portuguese. Really? Yeah. When I was in Brazil, I learned. Todo bem. Obrigado. Todo bem. Obrigado. Yeah, man. That's that's a、uh, muito bom, muito bom, muito bom. <laughs> Beautiful, man. So thinking now about all your kind of language experiences, do you remember any cultural differences or or funny instances between English and Chinese that give you maybe trouble or confused you over the years? 接下来我们要来问问 Jeff， 他在中文英文转换的过程中，有没有记得什么因为文化或是语言不同的关系而给他带来麻烦的例子嘞 ？Jeff 说这部分主要在 gender， 在性别这一块哦。因为中文一般来说，我们平常在讲话的时候，不管是男生女生，都一律会用他来表示，不会特别去说是男生的他还是女生的他。但是英文不一样，像之前有个外国朋友问他说：“哎，有没有女朋友？”那当 Jeff 用英文跟人家回答说：“哦，我有啊，我女朋友她很漂亮。”这样子的时候呢，都会直接用 he 来指他的女朋友，让对方分不清楚到底是男性的女朋友还是女性的女朋友。那虽然说不管男性女性大家都很 OK， 只是当下要搞清楚性别的时候，常常会因为 he 还是 she 的用法，会产生一些沟通上的不方便。那这种状况其实蛮常见的，尤其是我们一般讲话习惯上不会有男性女性的分别。如果你有这样的困扰的话，不用担心 ，You are not alone， 你不孤单。我们的格斗天王一样有遇过这问题，但是相信大家只要不放弃，努力去克服适应英文的这种用法，一切都会没问题的。The biggest trouble for me before was gender. Okay. Because in、yes. Chinese, it's always ta ta. There's、yeah. no difference between he or she. We all say ta. So I remember when I started to talk to foreigners, like frequently, I made this kind of mistake very, very often. Like, hey, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. And so, oh, my girlfriend, he is very beautiful. Like, uh, he, uh, are you sure it's a, it's a he? We can accept that, but、uh, we want you to tell us it's a he or a she. I say, oh, sorry, it's a she. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, man, that's it's very confusing. Very confusing the gender aspect. Yeah, I, I love actually how Mandarin Chinese we use ta. It's so much easier. Easy. Yeah, Easy. it's it's just like great. I don't have to think about this. Nice, man. So, can you share with our audience here on NG Ingwen any tips or advice that really kind of helped you? Get to the next level with your language abilities. Jeff, 在学英文的过程中，有没有用过什么方法、什么小配包是可以跟大家来分享的嘞？他说，第一步呢是必须要把英文想成是你生活的一部分 ，a part of your life， 不是只是学校上课的一个科目而已。尤其像现在网络这么发达，有很多资源可以去利用，可以上 YouTube、上 Netflix 看各国影片。
或是去把握任何跟外国人讲英文的机会等等。就算你英文讲不好也没有关系，没有什么好担心的。j e 说，他认识的外国人里面呐、啊，没有一个会因为他英文表达不好而取笑他，反而是如果有用法不对的，还会很好心教他。总之呢 j e 他觉得啊，永远不要因为害怕而不敢跟英文母语人士来讲话。他们知道你是来学英文的，知道你的难处，而且其实如果有不清楚的，通常都会很乐意帮忙。I think first thing is you have to think about language as part of your life. Don't think about just a subject in school. So, like, internet is very convenient right now. You can check YouTube. You can watch YouTuber from out of Taiwan. You can watch Netflix. I let I love Netflix. So many good shows, good TV series, <laughs> and use every opportunity you have to talk to foreigners.、Mm. Even you think your English is not good enough, it's okay because almost every foreigners I met before, I try to communicate with them in English. They are all very nice. They never laugh at me like, "Oh, your English so lame." Or you're wrong. On the other side, they're very kind to teach me if I made mistake how to speak English correctly. So I think it's very important. Never be scared to talk to someone whose mother language is English, because they understand your difficulty and they would love to help you. Yeah, man. I think that's a beautiful perspective. You were mentioning a little bit before too that you're kind of saying this idea that everyone's going to laugh at you or make fun of you. Maybe you felt like it's actually, for example. If I was in America and I was speaking English, well, people might make fun of my English because we're Americans. But、mm. you were saying maybe other Taiwanese might make fun of you、uh, for speaking English. Rather, yeah,、right? I think a lot of people like they kind of worry or afraid about that because in school kids are pretty brutal. Actually,、mm -hmm. they're always like, "Oh, your English is so bad," and people lose confidence in that kind of situation. But like I said, if you jump off the, you you jump out of the school, you know the world is way bigger and people are more friendly. It gives you confidence and courage to do things you have to do. Like I said, I think if you want to learn English properly, think about it as part of your life. All right, my man. Well, dude, unfortunately, this goes so quick here on NG Ingwen, but we have arrived at my last typical question, and and I love this question because I get to kind of see into the mind of of Jeff. So. On that note, going back in time, if is there any advice you could kind of give yourself about language or life? 访谈最后，我们一样要来问问 Jeff， 他有没有什么话想要跟以前的自己说嘞？他说他希望可以告诉大概十岁、十五岁的小 Jeff， 要勇敢一点，要 be brave， 而且呢，也要 be kind， be a good person， 要当一个善良的人。不要到处去制造麻烦。他另外也有提到，虽然小 Jeff 努力学英文是好事，但是拜托哈，也多花一些时间在物理 （physics） 跟数学 （mathematics） 上面，因为他后来发现其实跟英文一样重要。我们赶快一起来听听最后这段分享吧。I want to tell younger Jeff, like fifteen or even ten years old, be brave and be a nice, kind, good person. You know, never do anything evil. Sounds stupid, but I think. To my life right now, my age is very important, and also the way you learn English is good. But please spend more time learn physics and mathematics、oh. because those things are also important. Interesting.、Yeah. So, so you felt maybe you focused too much on English when you were younger. I focused too much on playing around. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate mathematics and physics because I thought that they are so difficult and it's、mm. not useful in life.、Mm. But even right now, when I when I training. When I'm teaching class, I want to use certain example or things to explain how to do this, how to do that. All of a sudden, I realize physics are very important.、Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, and that makes me think. Though, are you teaching now in English as well?、Um, you use, you use sometimes some of my students they are like、uh, American-born Chinese、mm -hmm. or like like half foreigners or something.、Mm -hmm. So I teach in English, thirty or forty percent of my time. Nice man.、That's... I made a lot of mistakes, but my students they never laugh at me. I even ask like, "Is it correct? Is it okay?" They are like, "Ah,、oh, it's very good. It's very good." Yeah, man. And I I think this is the the humble aspect of you of what I see in how you're doing business is a really beautiful thing to to lead you to success in this because you're applying personal skills with your language abilities to trying to make it more relatable to people and then bringing in all your knowledge of fighting. So, again, man. Congratulations on all your success, thank you. and thank you for making some time to join us. Thanks for inviting. Yeah, it's good. It's always good to share good things with people who in need and 
share with my friends. So I'm very happy for you to invite me to this show. Beautiful, man. So where can people find your life online or where can they maybe uh, come to another event? Uh, we probably gonna have our next event around mid June. But if you wanna have more, like you know, news and information about MMA or myself, you can find me on you uh, Facebook, uh, Jeff Machine. Jeff Machine. M A C H I M E the Machine. Yeah. Or uh, I G the same. And I'm gonna start my YouTube channel this year. So if you wanna search me online, Jeff Machine will bring you to. All my social media. Yeah, and the machine is actually kind of your fight nickname. Is that right? Yeah, I got the name in Brazil. Oh, yeah, because you just never stop. Yeah, I keep training. <laughs> even like those guys, you know, the Brazilians, their fighting level is like so high. Mm-hmm. But I just keep fighting, never quit. I go to the class every day. Even I was sick, I sit, I sit aside and watch them train. And people are like, "Man, are you serious?" I said, "Yes, I am." Oh, you're like a machine. You train. <laughs> And you never stop. Oh, it's good. It's good. And so they started to respect me as they're part of their team right now. That's beautiful, man. Well, much love, much love. And hey, Happy New Year. Xin Nian Kuala. Xin Nian Kuala. Xin Nian Kuala to everyone. Yeah, and wish Nian you Kuala. guys can come to our show and enjoy the show next time. Also, if you want to watch the show a couple of days ago, you can search on internet also. Mm-hmm. WTD ETD 03. 03. All right, my man. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is our NG Ingwin show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. You can search NG Ingwen or you can search NG English ICRT. And make sure to tune in each week, Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7 and Wednesday night from 9 to 9.30. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 好，那我们今天新平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线 English 在底线 ICRT。那大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 ICRT 频道 FM 一百，准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎大家上网搜寻西平方的攻其不备课程，或者是呢到我们西平方的官网多读读一些有关 NG 英文的专栏文章，看看在 NG 英文里面的专栏有没有哪些是大家可以吸收学起来的一些小 paper 哦。我们下次见了，拜拜。